Hey, 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 awesome people, Mr. C back with you with another Fractions video. Make sure if you learn anything new at all, click that like and subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. In this video, we are going to be subtracting fractions with unlike denominators by replacing given fractions with equivalent fractions in such a way as to produce an equivalent difference of fractions like denominators. <gasps> A lot of words there, but this is what we're doing. We are going to be subtracting fractions with unlike denominators using models. This will be our teaching video. You will find in the description below our practice problems video when you are ready for it. Also, you will find all things second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade fractions. Parents, teachers, there is also two links down there for you for IXL. IXL is an incredible program I used in my classroom. Perfect for independent practice, perfect for students to be able to use to track their learning, to see their growth, all right? One link is for a free seven day trial and the other link is for a 20% off memberships that's monthly or annual. Check those out, awesome, awesome program. Again, this video is going to be our teaching video for subtracting fractions with unlike denominators using models. Let's get after it, people. All right, awesome people. Got a problem on the screen here, but before we get started, like we always say here at Math and Mr. C, we have to have a growth mindset. And having a growth mindset means that you're gonna challenge yourself. It means that you know you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna find those mistakes and use them to help you get better. Making mistakes means our brains are growing, all right? We're not giving up whenever it gets hard. We're not giving up whenever we make a mistake. We are sticking with it, okay? So on the screen here, we've got three fourths minus one half. And if you've been following us in this series, the the last last videos we were working on was adding fractions with unlike denominators. And you're gonna find that subtracting fractions with unlike denominators is going to be very similar. Okay, it's gonna be very similar. The big difference is this right here. All right, what's that? That's a subtraction symbol, all right? That's the only big difference. You're gonna find this is really, really similar to how we solve adding fractions with unlike denominators, okay? So keep that in mind. Again, everything we're doing kind of builds off of each other, okay? So the first thing I'm noticing here in this problem is that we've got two fractions that have different denominators. These denominators are unlike, meaning they aren't the same. So what do we do? Well. In this video here, we're gonna draw some models and show you what it actually looks like to solve this problem. Because I don't want you just to become a human calculator. Your parents or teachers don't want you just to become a human calculator. We wanna make sure that you can see what it looks like to actually take 3 fourths and sub to subtract 1 half from it, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw some models. So let's draw both of our models here. First off, let's draw our three fourths and I'm going to use a rectangle here and I'm going to represent three fourths and then I'm going to use a rectangle to represent one half all right so let me go ahead and divide these up break them into four equal size pieces here shading in three out of the four as we know one fourth, two fourths, and three fourths. And then in this other model, we are going to represent one half. So let's break the model in half, and we're shading in one out of the two. So here we go, here's one half. All right, so there's our models. Right now, we, we can't like just go ahead and jump into this and subtract, okay? Eventually y'all will get to the point where you can just look at this and know what the answer is gonna be. And that's gonna be awesome when you get to that point. But right now, we need to do a little bit of extra work. And the reason we need to do a little bit of extra work is because we are not able to just do this. We're not able to just subtract straight across. All right, three minus one is two, four minus two is two. All right, our answer is not two over two. two Two, two seconds, all right? So it's it's not two over two, it's not one whole, it's not what our answer is gonna be. So let me show you what we need to do. If you remember in our adding fractions with unlike denominators, we had to represent 
the opposite fractions in our models. So that's what we're going to do here. So this model here, 1 half, we need to divide this model into half. Okay, but let me show you what needs to happen. Here's our models, and I'm going to redraw these models because, and I'm going to explain to you why, okay, I'm going to copy both of these models, because if you remember from our adding fractions with unlike denominators, we have to draw our models in different directions. So if we are going to do 3 fourths, let's, let's draw 3 fourths just like we did before with vertical lines. We're dividing this model vertically by putting lines that go up and down. And then our model over here for 1 half, we are going to represent it horizontally. Okay. And again, you're always going to find me do it in this order. I'm going to use vertical first and then horizontal to represent. You can flip flop it. I just want to be consistent to make it easy for us. So same things here. I've got three fourths. I've got one half, three fourths, one half. So what we need to do, I need to represent one half over here. I need to draw this exact line on this model to represent dividing it into half. Okay, stick with me. If I drew this line to make this model to represent the half over here, I need to draw fourths in this model to represent the three fourths because we had it broken into fourths. Okay, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, one half, two halves. Okay, so that's how we're kind of doing it. Now here's the part where it's going to all make sense, okay? How many sections are shaded in? Count how many sections are shaded in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of how many? Six out of how many sections are shaded in, Mr. C? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight sections. How many are shaded in? One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths. So we've got six eighths shaded in here. And then take a look at our model, our blue model. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight total sections. And how many are shaded in? One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. Okay. So before we solve this, I want to point a couple things out. This model here equaled one half. This model here equals four eighths. This model here equals three fourths. And this model here equals six eighths. How did this fraction turn into this fraction? And how did this fraction turn into this fraction? Was it magic? Did we just randomly do it? How did we get that? What was that process? Well, what we did, y'all, is we created an equivalent fraction. All right, we created equivalent fractions. You know that equivalent fractions can be created. This fraction 3 fourths is equal to 6 eighths. You can see our models. They're the same exact. They have the same exact amount shaded in. Over here, 1 half. They have the same amount that's shaded in. Okay? So, what we had to do was create equivalent fractions. Now, can we solve? Let's look. Denominators are the same, so we're going to be able to subtract. Denominator is 8, subtract the numerators. 6 minus 4 is 2, and your answer is 2 eighths. Some of you may be saying to yourself, Mr. C, you can simplify that. You're exactly right. You can simplify that to 1 fourth. All right, either answer would be correct. Now let me ask you some questions, okay? A lot of times students ask me, Mr. C, this is a lot of stuff on the screen here. This is a lot of stuff. And I always say, you know what, you're exactly right, but did you understand where all this is coming from? Because all of what we're doing here is just building off of what you've already learned. You know that we can't subtract right now because the denominators aren't the same, okay? We have a little bit of extra work to do. So we drew the models, which you already know how to do. These models, though, we needed to redraw them because we needed to create an equivalent fraction. And the reason we were creating equivalent fractions is because we wanted to create equivalent fractions that had denominators of 8. Once we had equivalent fractions that had denominators of 8, 
we were able to subtract because our denominators were the same. So that's how we got 6 eighths minus 4 eighths, which gave us the answer of 2 eighths. Where are you getting stuck at? Where are you getting confused at? What isn't making sense? Parents, teachers, have students tell you where they're getting stuck. Where is their mistake at? Don't let them just raise their hand and say, I don't get this. Students, don't just put your head down on the desk and say, I don't get this, this is too hard. That's giving up, that's not having a growth mindset. If you're getting stuck right here at the beginning, then that's where you're getting stuck at. That's where you restart. That's where we build off of. Okay, stick with it. Keep trying it. Rewatch this one and try another one with me. All right, let's keep after it. All right, second problem on the screen. We've got two thirds minus one fifth. First thing I'm noticing, denominators are not the same. So if they're not the same, we need to, we're gonna draw these models because our goal is to find common denominators. To do that, we're gonna to have to create some equivalent fractions for two thirds and create an equivalent fraction for one fifth because ultimately the goal is that their denominators are going to be the same number. So to do that, let's draw a model. Let's get two thirds here on the screen. And then we will get one fifth on the screen. I'm gonna copy this model. There we go change the color of it to green bet y'all wish that it was that quick for you sorry it's not so here we go let's represent two-thirds over here so one-third two-thirds three-thirds shade in two out of three to represent two-thirds there we go and then we've got one-fifth over here so one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Shade in a fifth of it. There you go. Again, I draw this first model just so that we can see it because this is the way that a lot of times we'll draw it to get started. Now that we see it though, let's draw our next models so that way we can set this up because right now this is two thirds, this is one fifth. We want to find and create equivalent fraction so we can easily solve. So here we go. Let me copy these and move them down. Remember for the one fifth, I'm going to have to represent that horizontally. For the two thirds, I'm going to keep it vertical. Okay, that's just for consistency so that way I'm not confusing us here. So shade this in for two thirds. And again, remember, draw your next model horizontally. So we gotta draw it in fifths. This is always hard for me. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Shade in one out of the five. I'll shade in this one. There we go. All right, so I've got two thirds. I've got one fifth. I need to represent, I need to draw five horizontal lines because my model for one-fifth has five horizontal lines so I'm gonna do the same thing over here there's one two three four and five okay because five horizontal lines five horizontal lines how many vertical lines do I need to draw over here there were three one two for three one two three so represent thirds over here and there we go okay again the reason we're doing that is because we need to create equivalent fractions we need these fractions to have equivalent or excuse me we need both of these fractions to have common denominators so to do that we're going to draw the other fraction onto those models okay so let's count them up let's see what we've got how many sections do we now have in this model let's look one two three four five six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Dang, that's a lot of sections. So that's 15 sections here. And how many of them are shaded in? 1 15th, 2 15th, 3 15th, 4 15th, 5 15th, 6 15th, 7 15th, 8 15th, 9 15th, 10 15th, okay? Now let's look at the other model here. 
How many sections are there? Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we got fifteen just like in our other model. How many are shaded in? One fifteenth, two fifteenths, three fifteenths. So let's take a look. Denominators are the same. How did we get them to be the same? Our models, they showed us. We broke them into fifteenths. So let's subtract. Denominator stays the same. Subtract the numerators. 10 minus 3 is 7. 7 fifteenths is our final answer. Where did you get stuck? Where are you lost? What didn't make sense? A couple things I want to point out to you. Remember, we couldn't subtract to start off. Eventually in your head, you could probably do this, but right now we're not able to do it, okay? And that's what I want to stress out. Right now, we just can't do it yet, and that's the big piece. So because we can't do it yet, we draw some models. Here's two thirds. Here was one fifth. We then created equivalent fractions, which gave us 10 fifteenths these two fractions are equal and we got 3 fifteenths over here and these two fractions they are equal we created equivalent fractions how did we do that by breaking these models into fifteenths we had one fifth represented in the green lines we had two thirds represented with the pink then we drew thirds in the pink and we drew fifths in the green, okay? And that's how we built our models of 10 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths. Again, parents, teachers, don't let them say they just don't get it, they don't understand, this is too hard. Ask them where they're getting stuck at, where are they making the mistake, what isn't making sense, okay? Students, stick with it, okay? This was only two problems. You don't learn everything that quickly, all right? It takes time, it takes practice, that's a growth mindset. In the description below, you will find our practice problems video. Click on that, try a few more with us. Let's keep you getting better at this skill, all right? Make sure if you learn anything new at all, click that like and subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. Also, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is at the end of this video. That's all I have for you. Mr. C, 